As adventure and dual sport motorcycle riders, we all face the same exact dilemma. Do you buy a small, lightweight bike like this Beta 500 RRS and get blown around on the highway and get vibrated to death and have to change your oil every single day of your ride? Or do you buy something like this R1250GS Adventure, which gives you a supremely comfortable and luxurious ride on the highway, but then when you get to the trails, you're dealing with a 600 pound monster that is just incredibly difficult to ride. Ultimately, you're gonna to have to find a compromise somewhere in the middle because even if you're lucky enough to own multiple motorcycles like I am, you still can't switch motorcycles partway through your adventure or partway through your trip. What we're gonna to do today is in a simple fashion, we're gonna break down the differences between these different sizes of adventure and dual sport bikes. And we're gonna to try to figure out what would be the best all around machine if you were trying to do a little bit of off-road and a little bit of on-road all in one bike. I've been lucky enough to own, ride, and test dual sport and adventure motorcycles of almost all different sizes, shapes, and flavors. And so I really am in a pretty good position to tell you the differences, the different compromises between these different sizes of motorcycles, and sort of give you a guide to understanding which would be the best for how you like to ride. I'm also gonna tell you all, if I could only own one bike out of these four, what would that be? Or if I could own two bikes out of these four bikes, what would those two bikes be? And then finally, I'll tell you if I could choose three of these bikes, what three bikes I would choose out of this group of four. And I think that'll be really helpful in understanding, you know, what bike is best for you. So obviously we can't cover every single little detail in this video, but what I have done is selected four main areas to provide us a way to compare these bikes and give them a score. So here's how this is gonna work. The four areas are weight, off-road performance, on-road performance, and then maintenance frequency or maintenance difficulty. So here's how this works. So for the weight score, how it's gonna work is that they're gonna get one point for every five pounds below 400 pounds, or they're gonna lose one point for every five pounds above 400 pounds. This will make more sense when we do the scores. Uh, for off-road, it's gonna be a one to 50 scale. So one would be like taking a Goldwing off-road and 50 would be like a 250 race bike two-stroke, right? So a perfect off-road bike. The on-road score is also gonna be one through 50. So a one would be like uh, that 250 race bike we talked about, trying to drive that on the highway. And a 50 would be like, you know, a gold wing level of comfort and performance and luxury, okay? Now for maintenance, I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna give it a score of one to 50, and it's gonna be difficulty or frequency and maintenance. So a one would be like, you have to tear down your engine every week. Uh, and a 50 would be like 10,000 mile oil change and hydraulic valves that you never have to adjust. So I hope those make sense. So why don't we start at the small end of these four motorcycles and go up from there. So let's talk just briefly about this Beta 500 RRS. This is a 2017 model in case anyone cares. So let's cover the specs of this Beta real quick. So it's a 50 horsepower single cylinder bike. It weighs around 250 pounds fully fueled up or around 113 kilograms. The advantage of this bike is it's extremely light. It has an incredible suspension. It's an enduro bike. You can go on single track. You can race with it. You can do crazy things off-road that the bikes behind me could really can't even dream of. And it's very comfortable doing that. Um, on the downside, however, is that maintenance is very frequent. It's very intensive because it has a very small oil capacity. You have to adjust the valves all the time and you're gonna to have to rebuild the engine fairly often. In terms of comfort, you've got a very, very narrow seat. You don't have any wind protection. Um, it's harder to mount luggage. Um, the engine's gonna vibrate a lot. And so you get the picture, but this is not a bike that you're gonna choose for touring. This is a bike you're gonna choose for hardcore off-roading. Now, some people's preference would be to take this bike, put some luggage on it, uh, maybe try to make it a little bit more of an adventure bike, just because they really want the lightest weight bike possible. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Choosing a bike for adventure riding always comes down to the basic same trade-off. You want a bike that is not so lightweight that you're gonna get blown off the highway by trucks, 
But you want a bike that when you do take it on the trail that it's not an overweight heavy uh, burden and prevents you from going on the trails you want to go on. So no scoring system is perfect and this is just something that I came up with and feel free to roast me in the comments which I know you will. This is also based off someone wanting the most versatile machine possible. So, you know, the way the scores work is that it's going to weigh, it's going to give preference to a bike that has the most all around capability. So this is not going to work for you if you're like more of a street rider who doesn't really care about the off-road part and that point, you know, you're going to go towards that more street oriented bike. Also, if you're a dirt oriented rider who really doesn't want to go on the highway and is going to avoid the highway as much as you can, then the onboard stuff is not going to be as important and these scores aren't going to work as much for you. So again, this is really for somebody who wants the best all around motorcycle, somebody who's going to ride in all terrain. The Yamaha Tenere T7, considered by many to be, at least right now, probably the perfect combination of on and off-road capabilities, reliability, price, weight, and all those things. So this bike comes in at around 450 pounds, or around 204 kilograms fully fueled up and ready to ride. It has around 70, 75 horsepower. It, it's a beautiful Yamaha CP2 parallel twin engine with a really linear spread of power. It's comfortable enough to do some highway touring, but it's also nimble and lightweight enough to do some moderate off-roading without getting like into crazy technical single track like you might take that beta on. For years, riders have been asking for a simple, reliable, relatively lightweight adventure bike with twin cylinders, something like more of a modernized and upgraded KLR 650. Well, Yamaha has delivered that and people like me have answered them and said, okay, we like this, we're gonna buy it. And so far, I absolutely love this motorcycle. It's very similar to me to something like a KTM 790 or 890, but it injects that Japanese reliability and drama-free ownership experience at the sacrifice of a little bit of horsepower and a little bit of suspension performance. Okay, so let's score the Beta 500 RRS on this chart here. So in the weight category, it weighs 250 pounds. So if you do the math on that, it's 150 pounds less than that 400 pound target. So it actually gains 30 points here. So really nice gain there. On the off-road portion, I'm gonna give it a 45 out of 50 because it's almost perfect off-road. I mean, it's not a 250 racing bike, you know, but it for a bike that has license plate and street legal equipment, it's pretty awesome off-road. Uh, for on-road, I'm gonna have to mark it pretty low because it's gonna vibrate you to death. You're gonna have to change oil all the time. It has no wind protection. Um, and yeah, you're just gonna have an issue. So uh, I'm gonna only give it five points there. Uh, for maintenance, I'm also only gonna give it five out of 50 because um, if you'd research these bikes, you know, they, they do take pretty frequent engine rebuilds. Also the oil change interval is like every couple of rides, it's pretty intense. So I'm only gonna give it five points there. So that brings us to a total score on the Beta 500 of 85 points. Ah uh, yes, the legendary and beautifully made Honda Africa Twin. This is the 1100, the 2021 model, standard version, not the Adventure Sports. So this bike, as you see it here, comes in around fi the 500 pound mark. Of course with DCT, I actually should mention that the DCT adds around 20 pounds. So this one's around 525 pounds, but if you get the manual shift, it's 500 pounds or about 225 kilograms. It uses a parallel twin engine and it makes around about 100 horsepower. So the Africa Twin slots somewhere in between the larger 1200 to 1250 class bikes, between there and the smaller uh, 700 to 900 cc adventure bikes. It takes some of the good characteristics from the large and small categories, but also some of the bad characteristics for the large and small categories as well. So what I mean is that it's not really as good off-road as like the 700 or the 790s, but it's also not as good on-road as a tour as like a 1250GS or Super Tenere 1200 or something like that. However, it should be said that the Africa Twin is one of the most reliable, highest quality, best value adventure bikes you can buy today. And if you want a DCT transmission, this is the only game in town for that. So if you're looking for a bike that combines some of the characteristics of the larger bikes, like pretty good on the highway, and some of the characteristics of the smaller bikes, you know, it's decent off-road, then something like the Africa Twin in the middle might be a really good choice for you. All right, so let's go ahead and score the Yamaha Tenere 700. So in the weight category, it's 50 pounds over our target weight of 400 pounds, so it only loses 10 points there. On the off-road category, I'm going to give it 35 out of 50. It's a very, very good off-road bike, but it's not an enduro dirt bike, so we have to keep that in mind. 
On the road, I'm gonna give it a 35 out of 50 because it's a very good road bike, um, but it's not perfect. It's not as comfortable and plush as something like a GS or a Goldwing or more of a touring bike or some of the bigger adventure bikes, but that's still a pretty good score. Uh, for maintenance, I'm giving it a 40 because although it does have a long valve interval and a long oil change interval, you do have to maintain a chain on the final drive instead of the shaft drive with lower maintenance like something like the GS or the Super Tenere has. So if you add all that up, it gives you a total score of 100 points. Ah yes, the big mama, the big elephant in the room known for its capability to take you to coffee shops anywhere in the world without even getting your tires dirty. That's supposed to be a joke, by the way, because actually these are really good off-road. And those of you who follow my channel, you know I really have a lot of respect for the GS. And I love it so much that I bought this 2021 model. So speaking of weight, yes, weight is a concern with this bike. This bike is almost 600 pounds, the way you see it, or around 270 kilograms. It uses BMW's famous opposed boxer engine and it makes around 136 horsepower, but importantly, it makes around 106 foot-pounds of torque, making it, I think, the most torque of any adventure bike you can buy. The GS is best suited for pavement duties with some light off-road exploration thrown in. And although BMW's marketing and some of the think videos and movies you see out there like to sort of show the GS as a world traveling bike. As I've mentioned in other videos, I would never choose this bike for round the world type travel. It's far too complicated, it's far too heavy, there's too much to go wrong, and you're not gonna find as many BMW service centers in a lot of the countries you would travel to. However, that being said, if you want a bike to go touring, sport touring, to take a passenger, to take a lot of cargo, if you want all the latest luxuries, tech and amenities, you want a lot of power, a lot of torque, and you're just gonna be doing some moderate off-roading and you can pick up a 600 pound bike because you're strong enough, um, this bike offers a combination of features like the shaft drive, the tail lever suspension, the boxer engine that no other bike, no other adventure bike can offer. And those are all reasons why I choose to have one of these in my garage. And of course, with the 7.9 gallon take of this adventure model, you can ride over 350 miles or well over 500 kilometers between fuel fill-ups. And that's not something you can say about just about any other adventure bike. So if you're looking for the ultimate and comfort and luxury on your adventure bike and you're not worried about the budget, then this is the bike for you. Okay, so let's score the Africa Twin 1100 Standard Edition. So on the weight, it's 500 pounds. So it's coming in 100 pounds over that target weight of 400 pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and that means it loses 20 points there. For the off-road category, I'm gonna give it 25 points. Uh, now, some of you might argue that, but in my experience of riding the Africa Twin 1100, uh, back to back with the Tenere 700, it's quite a bit heavier. It feels much more top heavy. The suspension's really soft. It just doesn't feel as natural off-road as that Tenere does. So I do have to mark it down there. Um, for on-road, however, this is where it gains some points because it is better than a Tenere. It has more power. It's um, a bit more relaxed at higher PM. It's just a better touring bike. So we're gonna give it 40 points there. And for maintenance, I'm gonna give it that same 40 points. It's real similar in maintenance to the Tenere 700. So if we add that up, let's see, 40 and 40 is 80, that's 105, minus 20 is going to be 85 points there on the Africa Twin. So that ties with the Beta 500. All right, let's score the big elephant in the room here, the 1250 GS Adventure. So weight is really something that hurts the GSA, we know that. At around 600 pounds, I'm rounding up to slightly there, um, it loses 40 points in our scoring system. And I think that's fair because the weight is a huge uh, drawback to the GS compared to these other bikes in the test. So for the off-road score on the 1250, I'm gonna go ahead and actually give it 20 points. Now you might say that seems a little bit too high compared to like the 1100, but honestly, it's pretty well balanced off-road and until you get into really technical situations, you'd be surprised how well the GS actually handles. Um, but when that weight becomes a problem, it is a big problem, but that's why it lost points here. So I'll go ahead and give it 20 points there. For on-road, it's amazing on-road. I, I wanna give it a 50, but I can't, so I'm gonna give it a 45. Um, but if you watch some of my other videos, I mean, it's an incredible touring bike and I certainly would not want anything else to go on tour with. Um, for maintenance, I also have to give it super high score because 
You've got long valve service intervals, long oil change intervals. It holds over four liters of oil, which is great. Um, but it gets a few more points than the Africa Twin and the Tenere on maintenance because it's a shaft final drive. So there's no chain maintenance every day or every couple days on your trips as you would have to be doing on those other bikes. So that adds up there. So let's do the score here on the 1250. So 45 and 45 is 90, 20, that would be 110, minus 40. So that brings us down to uh, 70 points there for the 1250 GS. So based on this kind of top gear type scoring system, I do have to show that the Tenere 700 wins this test in terms of overall all around capability considering the factors of weight, off-road performance, on-road performance, and maintenance. Now, yes, this is a faulty system. Everything is faulty. I'm a terrible YouTuber and all of that. And I should never review a bike again. And my haircut is bad and my clothing is bad and all the stuff that some of the commenters say, that's fine. But in this scoring system, the Tenere 700 does come out on top. And based on my riding experience, I agree with this, like this bears out the experience that I have riding these different bikes. Now, you could replace the Tenere 700 in this comparison with a KTM 790 or 890 Adventure R, and I think the score would be very, very close to this in all these categories because it's a very comparable experience to riding Yamaha's Tenere 700. There is one thing I can tell you with certainty. There is no unicorn dual sport or adventure bike. People have said that they want a sub 400 pound twin cylinder bike with a comfortable seat, a rally windshield, and all the latest features. They want it to cost $9,000 and they want it to have 100 horsepower and no maintenance. Well, that's simply never ever going to happen. For those of us who live in a real world, we have to make a choice. For me, if you're asking my opinion, if I could just have one motorcycle for all the riding I like to do, it would be this, Yamaha's Tenere 700. Without any doubt in my mind, without any hesitation, this would be the bike. And the more I ride it, the more I'm actually starting to like it more than my old 790 Adventure, but we're gonna have to talk about that in a later video. Now, what if I could have two motorcycles in my garage, just two? Well, that's a little bit more interesting because I would need something to go like serious off-roading and I also want something that was really, really good on the street and for long rides. So I'd be forced to choose my R1250 GS Adventure and the Beta 500. Those would be my ideal two bike garage. Now, what if I could have three motorcycles. If I could have three motorcycles, and this is actually the case for me and is what I own, I would have the Beta 500 for dirt, I've had the Tenere 700 for ad adventure riding, and I'd have the 1250 GSA basically for touring and very light adventure. So the question is, what do you think? You guys are a very vocal, very engaged audience, and I really appreciate that. So what's your opinion? Like, if you could just have one bike, what would it be? If you could have two bikes, what would those be? And uh, have you found your unicorn, or what's the closest to the unicorn that you've found? I'd really like to know, and I think a lot of people on this channel would like to know. So as always, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please stay tuned. A lot more exciting content coming out on all these bikes and more. We've got a lot more test bikes, a lot more press bikes coming down the line. If you enjoy what I do, if you want to support me, there's a few things you can do. You can subscribe and hit the bell. You can leave a comment. You can consider supporting me on Patreon. You can always give the videos a thumbs up. And again, just engage with the channel, leave comments, discuss with each other, and uh, that makes this all a better place and makes us more of a community. So thanks again for watching. Ride safe, and we'll see you out on the trail.